what in the world do this crop circle and this giant geoglyph white horse in Uffington, England have to do with one another? Well, for starters, they're only about a mile or two apart. They're pretty much right next to one another. And I'll read you something real quick from the description of the white horse. Located near Wayland's Smitty in the Uffing is the Uffington White Horse, a highly stylized figure which is 347 feet, or I'm sorry, 374 feet long. It was made by digging deep ditches and then filling them with crushed white chalk. The geoglyph was constructed during the Bronze Age, sometime between 1400 and 600 BCE, making it about three and a half thousand to two and a half thousand years old. Now. Let's take a look at this. This is a crop circle that I discovered in the process of making a video about how at one point in time during the Bronze Age there was a one world or at least a one European culture, a Scandinavian culture that existed from the British Isles and the UK all the way across to the heart of central Siberia. And they had one common culture and they worshipped a god named Wayland who became significant of this horse right here, this white horse. And the story behind that is their god Wayland that the pagans worshipped, that they worshipped before Christianity came. Well, when Christianity supplanted him, he was made to take a job shoeing horses. So his symbol became a horse. The area in Britain where the white horse is located is filled with other ancient megalithic geoglyphs and structures for instance right here you can make out the outline of another structure and that's the thing a lot of these things are so big that most of the people living on the land have no clue what's actually there see this could have been an ancient race course for for instance that this crop circle happens to be pointing to look at this bathtub like feature outlined on the terrain clearly visible but one half mile away exactly from the center of this cross I'll measure and show you so you can see one half mile exactly from the center of this cross which is what this crop circle represents is the tree of life the, the seven sephiroth the seven inner planets boom you see that from the center of this crop circle to the center of Wayland Smitty, which is right here, is a one half mile measure exactly. Ground leap, 0. 0.5 miles, 55 degree declination angle. And we get here, this is Wayland Smitty, and this was a Bronze Age monument around 3400 BCE. Look at the giant size of these stones. These are easily over, I'd say, 10, 20, maybe even 30 feet or more gigantic stones how did the ancient man move them supposedly they were primitive yeah right the stone tomb has a long entrance chamber with ends in a cuneiform in a cusiform chamber area the mound was then surmounted with large upright curb stones the newer megalithic mound is 185 feet long and 43 feet wide archaeologists found that it, con it contained the remains of seven adults and one child representing eight so here let's look at this tree of life again I was wondering what the eight represented my original interpretation had been that these seven spheres represent the seven planetary spheres the heavenly bodies the moon the Sun Mercury Venus Mars Jupiter but they also correspond to the seven chakras root chakra to the crown chakra but I was kind of perplexed as to this eighth non-circle, but it's an intersection, it's the cross, and what that typically represents is the pineal gland, or the third eye, but also it creates a vesica pisces here, which can represent the vulva, or creation, fertility. So I think it's, it's a symbol of fertility, it's the kundalini energy, it represents the tree of life, but I think also, it may be alluding to the number of people who were buried in the mound. Eight. There are seven people and one child representing the, the non-formed eighth umbrella here. The larger sphere. It's eight. It's half. It's a child. 
it's still growing. Its tentacles were growing. There were seven adults and one child found inside the monument that's a half mile away. You tell me. All right, now I'm going to take you over and we're going to check out the tattooed princess. This beautiful young maiden you're looking at on the right was found here in the Yukok Plateau in Altai Republic of Russia. Now I want you to keep in mind that's 3,500 miles from Wayland Smitty, White Horse, and the Kundalini, the Kundalini crop circle that I've just shown you. This magnificent, gorgeous Scandinavian young woman was found mummified. She's 2,500 years old. She was found buried in a dolmen similar to Wayland Smitty where ice was able to get inside and perfectly preserve her. What makes her really special is she has an amazing collection of, of tattoos, just beautiful artwork. As you can see, this really bold horse on her shoulder is a horse representing Wayland, the horse god. And it's, it's a very gorgeous representation. Here is another um, version of it showing another one of her tattoos. It says, this is Princess Ukox, that's her name, or their name for her. Shoulder tattoo of a fantastic animal. Okay, it's not a fantastic animal. This is a real animal. This is a horse with long, flowing, braided, beautiful mane. And it's jumping in all its beauty, and it's a male horse. And you can even see his phallus representing his fertility. This was representing the god Wayland, the same god represented at White Horse. This is a, a proof positive of the cultural connection, other than the fact that they were both the same ethnicity, the Druids and the Scandinavians. Three and a half thousand miles different, exact same time space. The white horse at Uffington was supposedly constructed roughly a little bit more than 2500 BC. She was supposed to have been buried 2500 BC. One civilization is what I'm proposing spanned the entire northern European continent, perhaps even into the Americas. There's evidence of such voyages. Ogum writing has been found in North America. <clears throat> St. Brendan's Journey. Chalon Balam, the Jaguar priest. Just a, a few examples. Quetzalcoatl, another example of Americans claiming that fair skinned white men with beards arrived from a land in the east. To bring them profound knowledge and, and spiritual teachings. They were the Druids, these people. She was a Druid. They have one culture all over the world. They are the remnants, the survivors of the Cataclysm of Atlantis. They are the Aryan race, the Indo-European race, the same people who mastered the arts of the ages, like agriculture. And I'm going to show you right now what I mean by that. What you're looking at is a site that I've discovered using Google Earth at 51 degrees north, 1 degrees west, elevation 661 feet. This is basically due south of the White Horse Monument. And here you have one, two, three, four dolmens or mounds clearly visible from the sky. But what is more interesting and more pertinent, I wanted to show you how skillful these people were and that to link them to other great and skillful civilizations such as the Indus Valley Civilization who was known to have mastered agriculture and agriculture meaning they were able to, to create canals and harness the water and not become servants of nature but make nature their servants and this is clear evidence of what's happened here in the past you can see here there's and it's no longer running but there was once a river flowing through here. Here's one path and basically the road kind of takes the general path of the ancient riverbed but then it veers off here through Kensington Warren and you can clearly see where it once was. Well there was an ancient civilization built here right alongside the river and they had taken 
and they had channeled, they had canaled, they created an aqueduct to channel the water over here, creating this huge lake reservoir, I believe. It could have been a lake, it could have just been a roundabout to, to act to act as a, an aquifer for all their crops, but I think they probably had a reservoir here as well. And then they, they brought it back, and they had an exit, so if it got too full, they could let the water back into the river, managing their water supply. These people were agricultural geniuses. Geniuses. And what's more, yeah, this isn't too far from, guess what? It's just, this right here is literally a stone's throw away from Wayland Smitty, and our crop circle. So, there's a man a lot of you might have heard of. His name is David, Al, uh, David Hatcher Childress, and you might have seen him on the History Channel, Ancient Aliens and things like that. He wrote a lot of books. Well, he wrote this one right here called Anti-Gravity and the World Grid, and he talks about Hermes Trismegistus and Geomancy, for instance. Quote, looming behind all concepts of the planetary grid stands the ancient Magus, Hermes Trismegistus, thri thrice greatest master, geomancer of Earth. <clears throat> he goes on to read, The grid has been variously described by poets and clairvoyants in recent times. Ley lines are the radial threads of a spider's web. A spider's web, as you can see right there in the crop circle. Ley lines form the focal points in a vast multi-layered cobweb somewhat reminiscent of a micrograph of nerve cells and their ganglia as the circulation and nervous system of the body of earth so that's exactly what this crop circle is representing as i said the kundalini energy the nervous system the chakra the cobwebs represent the ley lines the people who are making these are of great great esoteric knowledge if it's people making them at all. It'd have to be a people such as this, a people so technically capable they were able to move massive monumental stones like this, taken from the 3400 year old BC Wayland Smitty in the UK in England, and then here on the right, this is from the, <clears throat> the Atli in Russia, and the discovery of the princess's tomb. And I'm gonna read you a little bit from it. Unfortunately, for reasons that remain unclear, excavations had to stop, perhaps because of disturbance of local residents claim that the dust was disturbed by their progenitor. Although this is extremely controversial, because modern Altians are Turkic peoples, and the princess has classic Scandinavian European looks, as you've already seen. However, despite the termination of the excavation, a unique mummy was taken from the Altai, and taken to the Institute of Archaeology and Ethnography of the Siberian branch of the Russian Academy of Sciences after, by scientists to the Research Center of Biological Structures in Moscow. Now what this article goes on to say is that basically the discovery of this princess has turned or quote fundamentally destroyed the ideas of scientists about the people who inhabited the region previously. There was a strong development of civilization in the region. They thought that basically it was just a bunch of backward tribes, quote, that lived there before, but that's not the case at all. It appears, quote, it appears that in the year 1000 BC, the inhabitants of, Rot of the remote mountains of Atli walked not in leather with stone axes as previously thought, but they rather had clothes made of fine silk, and they were able to melt gold and bronze ornaments and tools and make fabulous art as in the folklore of the place before the discovery of the tomb there is an ancient legend that tells of princess Caden ducks on a high plateau in the south of the Atli is located at the height of three feet above sea level accidentally considered as sacred ter anciently considered a sacred territory at the foot of the great mountains Taben Bogda Allah is the heavenly peace the second layer of the heavens inhabited by the children of the sky further legend tells how according to Scythians who came to this land thousands of years ago before they were living beings came here from the stars and had supernatural powers and somewhere among the vertices Tabin Bogdan Ola lived the mysterious Huang and his team. Perhaps the, this man and the captain of the ship, the team will return to earth of extraterrestrial sciences because at, as the story, the Scythian tradition goes, after several years living in this world, Huang and his team, they departed in a fire-breathing dragon made of copper and flying home to the stars. This has been a Roman Savage production.